نحمده و نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العبدة من لساني يقضو قولي ربنا زدنا علما There are five pillars of Islam about which we learn from the hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that بني الإسلام على خمس Islam is built upon five pillars And they refer to the actions which a person has to perform in order to be a Muslim. Which are, first of all, shahada, testimony of faith. Then secondly, salah. Thirdly, fasting. Fourth, zakat. And fifth, the hajj of baytullah. So these are the five essential things that a person has to do in order to be a Muslim. What we are going to be looking at, inshallah, in these six days, is going to be the six pillars of iman. The six pillars of faith. Because you see, action is a result of faith. Faith is in the heart and action is performed by the body. And we know very well that in life we can only perform those things in which our heart is fully in. If we are not convinced in our heart about the importance of something, the correctness of something, we cannot make ourselves do it. Like for example, a person could be waking you up at a particular time. That wake up, wake up. But if you believe in your heart that you deserve to sleep, and it is not important for you to get up, nobody can wake you up. Your eyes will not open. And even if they're open, you're not going to get out of your bed. So for anything in life, what is essential, the first thing, what is most important is the faith which is in the heart. Now as Muslims, there are certain things that we have to do. But what is all of that founded upon? What is the foundation? What is the basis of that? It is Iman. It is faith. And this is why we see that Iman has so much importance in our religion. If there is Iman, then there is obedience. Then there is worship. And if that Iman is missing, then that worship is also empty. It is useless. It doesn't benefit a person. In the Qur'an, we learn right at the beginning about different types of people. About the people of taqwa. About the disbelievers. And also about the hypocrites. About the munafiqeen. And one of the things that is mentioned about them is that وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ That there are people who say that we believe in Allah and the last day, but they're not actually believers. Why is it so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejects their faith? Because they say with their mouths that they have faith, but that faith is not in their hearts. Because if that faith was in the heart, then it would show by their actions. It would be demonstrated by their words. And this is why it is so important that we revive this faith We learn about this faith because if that faith is missing, we cannot fulfill the very purpose of our lives. We cannot fulfill the very purpose of our existence. If you think about it, every single thing that exists, is there a reason behind it? Yes. It is made for a certain purpose, to perform a certain action. Like for example, if you come across a gadget, Let's say you see a phone and there is a button on the side. And you ask, what is this button for? And you are told nothing. It doesn't do anything. What would you say? It's not possible. If there is a button here, it better do something. How could they put a button when it does not have a role, when it does not have a function? Every single thing has a function. Even if it's for the purpose of beautification, there is still a purpose. And what is that purpose? Beauty. But it makes sense to you that okay, for the purpose of beauty, they put it there. Now, human beings, why are we here? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us? Why did He make us dwell on this earth, on this planet? In the Quran, Allah tells us, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have not created men and jinn except that they... Worship me. The purpose of our existence is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Khaliq, the one who made us. And a person cannot worship Allah without knowing Him. 
A person cannot worship Allah without knowing Him, without knowing His names and attributes, without knowing about what He has commanded, about what is it that He has legislated. A person cannot worship Allah without knowing the reward that He has promised and the punishment that He has warned of. And it is essential that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because worshiping Allah is actually a need of our heart. It is a human need. <laughs> human beings are very needy. Very needy. Very dependent. If you compare the human child, baby, with other creatures, like for example, an ant that is born, or a monkey that is born, or a deer that is born, there is a clear difference. You will see that other creatures, some within moments of when they're born, they become independent. Or within days, maximum within months, or maybe a year. But we see that the human being is needy and dependent from the moment that he is born. If someone doesn't pick him up and clean him up and feed him, it will die. That human being will die. If that child is not taken care of, for the first year or two, and even more in fact, we see that it will have a drastic effect on that child's abilities. Right? Many children, when they develop certain problems as they grow up, when it is looked into, many times the reason is that the child was not picked up as much. The child was not shown love. The child was not responded to. And as a result, this is happening today. This is why he has this problem or he's suffering in this way or he has this disability. Why? Because the certain need was not fulfilled. We are in need of food. We are in need of love. We are in need of air. We have spiritual needs. We have emotional needs. We have mental needs. We also have physical needs. We have needs. And those needs must be fulfilled if we are to survive. If we are to thrive. If we want to improve and make something of ourselves, then it is necessary that those needs are fulfilled. Now we see that the body has needs and the soul has needs. The heart has needs. The needs of the body, they're very important. In the sense that if a person doesn't get a certain amount of food, a certain amount of rest then his health will be affected. But we see that every person is different. There are some people who will survive with even three hours of sleep. And there are others who cannot survive with eight hours of sleep. They need at least ten. Children need up to twelve, and sometimes even more than that. Hmm? But there are some people who can survive with just two to three hours of sleep. Likewise, there are some people who need a lot of food. And there are others who can survive with just a bite or two. We all vary when it comes to physical needs. And if one day our physical need is neglected, it's not really a big deal. Like for example, if you're traveling to the other part of the world, then you're on the go for 24 hours. Some people are on the go for 30 hours or so, one flight after the other. And what happens? They don't get to rest much. They don't get to eat much. They don't even get to put their head down for 24 hours. Do they get sick? No. Do they survive? Yes, alhamdulillah. It's not a big deal if you don't get to sleep one day. You can always make it up after. But when it comes to the needs of the heart, the needs of the soul, remember they are far more important than the needs of the body. They're far more important. Because a person could have all the food in his stomach. He could have had all the rest that he needed. But if he doesn't know why he is living, that food is not going to satisfy him. That sleep is never going to satisfy him. The questions that are unanswered, the doubts that are there, if they are not resolved, a person can never be satisfied with no amount of money, with no amount of pleasure, 
with no amount of anything. Nothing can satisfy him. The spiritual needs are far more important than physical needs. Now the question is, what are our spiritual needs? When it comes to physical needs, we're very aware. Because we're told from the beginning, make sure you eat this and you get this much rest. But when it comes to our spiritual needs, unfortunately, they are neglected. What are the spiritual needs? They are belief in Allah. They are faith, iman. Because when a person believes in Allah, he has faith in God, then he can rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he can have hope. Then he can trust. Then he can look forward to reward. Then he can have the strength to be patient. Only then he can have rest. So the spiritual needs are tawheed, iman, ibadah, worship. There are certain physical activities which if you do, they will bring you some level of satisfaction. So for example, you talk to a friend. You're talking to them for an hour. You do have some kind of satisfaction at the end of that discussion. But if you recite Qur'an for even 10 minutes, that will bring you a different kind of satisfaction. It will bring you a much better satisfaction. Ibadah, worship. So essentially, the rights of Allah. And what are they? Tawheed, ibadah, iman. They are our spiritual needs. There is a direct connection. The rights of Allah, when we fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they satisfy our spiritual needs. They give us a purpose to live. They bring meaning to our lives. And if this is missing, then our lives are empty. Our bodies may be physically satisfied, but if they're emotionally, spiritually empty, they are thirsty and hungry. And thus a person cannot live a satisfied life at all. And this is the reason why today, inshallah, we're going to spend a little bit of time discussing about iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in Allah. Because when believing in Allah, worshipping Allah is a need, it is essential that we know about this. And even if we know about it, we remind ourselves of it. Because there are many things that we know about, but yet we remind ourselves of it so that we don't forget. Important things, we always review them. Important points, important matters in our lives, we continue to remind ourselves and also our families about them. If there is some medication that you need to have, you will have it. You will put a reminder on your phone. You will keep that medication out somewhere so that you remember it. Your children will remind you. Your children will remind you. Why? Because they realize it is something that is important for you. So you might wonder, yeah, belief in Allah, we all know about it. We all know we're Muslim, we're supposed to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why are we spending so much time reviewing this? Because review is always helpful. It is always helpful. Especially if the matter is essential, if it is important. In the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 35, that, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who have believed, اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ Have fear of Allah. وَبْتَهُ And seek إِلَيْهِ to him الْوَسِيلَةِ The means of nearness. Seek those means, adopt those means that will draw you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الْوَسِيلَةِ وَجَاهِدُوا فِي سَبِيلِهِ And strive in his way لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you can be successful. Now in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ Adopt the means that will draw you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because if you don't have that sense of closeness to him, then you cannot be happy then you cannot have patience. Then you cannot rely upon Him. Then you cannot be at peace. You cannot live a meaningful life. Because the fact is that we are made for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we fulfill that purpose, that will satisfy us. 
This is why the one who loves Allah, he feels closer to Allah. And when we don't fulfill the purpose of our lives, then what happens is that we feel distant from Allah. And we fill our hearts with the love of other than Allah. Whether it is a person, or a house, or a career, or anything else. And remember that when a person loves other than Allah, he is punished through it. He is punished through it. Because when he loves that particular being or that object, instantly his expectations of him increase. And when they increase and they're not fulfilled, then a person is instantly disappointed. And with that disappointment, there is also a sense of failure and loss and sadness and regret. Because, like we discussed earlier, that human beings are needy. And we need first and foremost, who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need Him. Allah does not need us, but we need Him. And He is the only one who can satisfy us and who can fulfill every need of ours. And if we turn to money, if we turn to pleasure, if we turn to anything else, yes, it will bring you some sort of satisfaction, but in the long run, it will only disappoint you. Has it not happened that you move into your new house and you are pleased with the color of the walls and you are pleased with the texture of the carpet and you're pleased with the shiny sink, but then what happens after a couple of weeks, in fact days? you see that that sink has scratches, right? And you see that those walls, they're not plain and clean anymore. You see that that carpet is not soft anymore. Isn't it? And if you had high expectations of it, if you were too attached to it, what's going to happen? You're going to be very sad. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to turn towards something else. And that is also going to disappoint you. Who is it that will never ever disappoint you? Who will truly amaze you, forever surprise you? Who is that being? Only one, Allah al-Wahid al-Ahad. The one, the only one, al-Witr, the single, Allah. So this is why it is necessary that we strive in our lives to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to other than Allah, but only to Allah. Because no matter what it is in this life that you draw near to, you draw close to, ultimately either it will leave you or you will leave it. It will disappoint you. How? By leaving you or by you leaving it. Everything in this life. Every person in this life. Once Um Habiba radiallahu anha, she made dua. And she said, Oh Allah, please benefit me from my husband and my father and my brother. The Prophet ﷺ said, you have asked Allah about a matter, about people whose lives are already decreed. Meaning it's already decided how long these people are going to live. Who knows? Your husband might die before you. Your father might die before you. Your brother might die before you. Why do you depend on them? Why do you expect from them? You should ask Allah for what? For safety in the hereafter. To give you reward in the hereafter and protect you from the punishment there. That is what you should be seeking, not the people. Because no matter how many people you have in your life, they are not perfect. No matter who they are and no matter how many they are, they are not perfect. Perfection is only with who? Allah Azza wa Jal. He alone is perfect, subhanahu, exalted is he, perfect is he. And this is the reason why in this life, our goal should be to draw closer and closer to him. Because ultimately we have to return to him. يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانِ إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَادِحًا فَمُلَاقِيهِ You are toiling, exerting towards your Lord and eventually you're going to meet him. إِنَّ إِلَيْنَا إِيَابَهُمْ all the people are going to return back to Allah. He sent us and He is going to call us back. Ultimately, we face Him. And when we face Him, when we meet Him, how do we want to be? 
close to him or far from him. If a person is close to him in Jannah, only then every wish of his can be satisfied. Only then he is safe, inshallah. And if a person is far removed from Allah on that day, in the hereafter, then that is the greatest loss. But a person can only be near Allah in the hereafter if he strives to be close to Him now. And a person will be far from Allah in the hereafter if he feels far from Allah now. Now. So our spiritual condition today is actually going to be our physical condition tomorrow. How we are spiritually now, we are going to be physically later. And this is why it's so essential that a person draws close to Allah. He adopts the means of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now while there are many aspects of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, today inshallah I'm only going to focus on this one aspect of how to attain nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we love Allah? Do we believe in Him? And it is only natural that when you love someone, you want to make them happy. And you want to be close to them. Why do you want to be close to them? Why do you want to make them happy? So that you can be loved in return. Because one-sided love is not love. It is torture. It is pain. What is love? When is it that you experience the joy of love? When you love and you are loved in return. So there are many people who claim to love God, who claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But who is it that Allah loves? How is it that we can receive the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How? By drawing close to Him. And how is it that a person can draw close to Allah? Let's look at that. In the Quran, Allah commands us, وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ wasila. Seek to Him, wasila. Have you heard of the word wasila? I'm sure many of you have. And while we believe in wasila, because obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to adopt that, many times there is a little bit of confusion in our minds with regards to it. That what is correct with regards to this matter, what is wrong, what is the right way, what is it that we should do, and what is it that we should avoid. Because you see, if you think about it, all the different religions that exist, what is their primary focus? God, right? And we see that the majority of the people are lost. Why? Because they're not seeking God in the right way, in the correct way. So even though they are striving a lot today, in the hereafter, their efforts will not bring them any benefit. This is why Allah warns us in the Quran, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا Should we inform you about the people whose deeds will be wasted, who are the worst losers when it comes to their actions? Because their actions will bring them nothing. They will bring them no benefit on the Day of Judgment. Who are they? They are those people who think they are doing really good, but in reality they will have no reward in the hereafter. Their deeds, their efforts, their striving will not be accepted. It will be rejected, refused by Allah. Why? Because it was not done in the way that Allah has legislated. You see, if you like someone and you want to make them happy, like for example, let's say there's a child, right? And you want to become friends with them. Many times it happens that if there is a child in the family, so the uncle, the aunt, the grandmother, the grandfather, the mother, the father, everyone, what's their goal? That this child should be closest to me. Right? Which is why one day the grandmother is bringing one gift, the grandfather is bringing another gift. Hmm? The father is doing one thing, the mother is doing another thing. Why? Because they want to be the best friend for that child. They want to be best buddies with him. They want that wherever they go, the child should come running to them, not to anybody else. Right? So what is it that the family members do? What is it that they do to win the love of that child? They will buy him something that the child doesn't even know what it is. Like for example, will the grandmother bring an appliance for the child? Let's say a blender. And the child will be very happy. Okay, what if the grandfather brings him, let's say, a hammer 
Okay, the child will be fascinated by the hammer, but the hammer is dangerous for the child, right? Or let's say the aunt brings him a book that is full of words, no pictures. A book with no pictures. Boring. The child is not going to be interested at all. He might look at, you know, a few things, and then he might look away. Clothes. People bring clothes to children, and what do children do? They look away. They're not interested at all. Those expensive clothes the child is wearing, and what's happening? He's wiping his nose on it, or he's spilling juice all over it. He doesn't care. Not at all. But if that same child, you give him his favorite candy, right? Or, and even if it's very small, even if it's one. Like you know some children, they love Smarties. So if you give them one even, they'll love you. They'll be very happy with you for that one Smartie. Not a whole pack, even that one will satisfy them. Right? You bring them a toy, they'll be happy. You give them an appliance, even if it's thousands of dollars, they don't care. Right? How is it that you can win the love of someone? By doing a thousand things that they don't like? No. By doing even one thing which they like. You could do a thousand things to make someone happy, but if it's not what they've asked for, they'll never be happy with you. It doesn't matter how much money you spent. It doesn't matter how tired you became. It doesn't matter how much effort you put in. That's not what they like. That's not what they're interested in. That's not what they asked you for. So they're not going to be happy. You ask someone to make tea for you. And they make you, they bring you some fancy coffee. Will you be satisfied with it? No. Because you don't have coffee, you have tea. The way tea satisfies you, coffee never satisfies you. So even if they bring you a dozen coffees, you won't be happy. Right? So when we understand this with regards to people, that we can only make them happy by doing what they like, then why is it that when it comes to the matter of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, earning His pleasure, His love, His approval, we don't want to do what He has legislated. We want to make Him happy by our own ways. No. If we want to satisfy someone, we want to make someone happy, we better do what they want us to do. Even if it's small, even if it's little, if it is what they like, it's far more better than a thousand things that they don't like. So how is it that a person draws nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How? By doing what Allah has commanded. By doing what He has legislated. By following His religion. By performing the actions that He has guided us to. By fulfilling the commands that He has given us. Not the ways that people have invented, but the ways that He has instructed with. You see, there are two things. One is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to happen. And there are many things. Obviously, everything that's happening, it's happening by the permission of Allah. And then there are those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded that we must do them. One is what Allah allows, and the other is what He has commanded. What Allah allows could be something that He likes, and it could also be something that He dislikes. But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given people the freedom of choice, this is why He allows them to sin, and He has also allowed them to perform good deeds. Which is why we see that there is good in this world, and then there is also evil in this world. And we as Muslims believe that just because there is evil, it doesn't mean that God likes it. It doesn't mean that Allah likes it. He has allowed it to happen for a certain reason. Right? But remember that what Allah has commanded, every single command, every single instruction, major or minor, big or small, remember He loves it. He loves it. And this is the reason why He has asked us to perform it. If it's salah, it's because He loves it. If it is zakat, it's because He loves it. If it's hajj, it's because He loves it. 
So every command that Allah has given, Allah loves it. In a hadith we learn, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My servant draws near to me. How? By performing those actions which I have enjoined upon him. When a person performs the actions which Allah has enjoined on him, which Allah has obligated on him, then what happens? A person draws closer to Allah. And when a person performs voluntary good deeds, then he draws even closer to Allah. So what is the way of drawing closer to Allah? By performing that which Allah has legislated, which Allah has commanded. So when Allah tells us, وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ wasila," Seek the ways of nearness to Him. Then what is that referring to? Perform that which Allah has legislated, which Allah has commanded, so that you can draw near to Allah. And when you draw near to Allah, then you will attain His pleasure. Then you will make Allah happy. And then your needs will be fulfilled. Then difficulties will be removed from you. Then your matters will become easy for you. In this life and in the next. Now, what happens is that some people, they wish to draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what they do is they make a mistake in drawing closer to Allah. And what is that mistake? That they think we need a connection to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need someone in the middle in order to be close to Allah. And a typical example that they give, which is which seems very rational, is that if you want to get to the roof or the top of the building, then you need a ladder. Right? If you want to get to the floor which is above you, what do you need? Stairs or an elevator. Some means that will take you high. So... There are some people who are very righteous. So if you are close to them, if you make them happy, automatically what's going to happen? You're going to be close to Allah. Now, this makes a lot of sense, logically. But I have a question for you. If there is a way of, let's say this afternoon when you came to this building, if you were told the stairs are closed, here's this rope, Take this rope and just, you know, somehow get up there. What would you do? Would you use it? Would you use that rope in order to get to the level above? No, you wouldn't do that because it's dangerous. It's not safe. Or let's say they put a big table and another table on top of it and a chair on top of it and another table on top of it. And they say, there, you can climb over this and get upstairs. Would you do that? You're like, no, it's okay. Maybe I'll come some other time. I don't think I can go up like this. It's dangerous. It's not safe. And I don't think I'm going to try it out. You can come with a lot of passion, with a lot of enthusiasm. But if you see that this is the way of going up, you'd rather stay away because it is dangerous. So while you need a connection to go higher, that connection better be the right connection. If it's not the right connection, is it going to take you up or is it going to take you down? It's going to take you down. Instead of going up safely, you might fall and get injured. So the people who use incorrect ways of drawing close to Allah, unfortunately they don't draw close to Allah, they go farther away from Allah. And may Allah protect us. Because this is the greatest deception. The person thinks he is close to Allah, but in reality, he is far. In the Quran, Allah tells us about the mushrikeen. That what they said was that these idols we worship, why? لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى So that they can draw us closer to Allah. Through them, we get near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're a connection. They're a connection. This is why we need them. I have a question for you. If you're traveling somewhere, let's say from here to New York, 
and you take a flight. How long is it? Three and a half to four hours. Okay. You could take a direct flight, right? And within three and a half, four hours, inshallah, you'll be at your destination. But if somebody says, no, there is a much cheaper option, you go from here to Toronto first, and then from Toronto you go to Vancouver, and then from Vancouver you go back to Texas or wherever, and then from there you go to New York. It's a total of 18 hours, but it's cheaper. Would you take that option? Not even somebody paid you. Why? Because your time is more precious. Isn't it? You'd rather have a short flight, which is reliable, more secure, less exhausting, right? It's going to make you reach your destination much faster, much quicker. So when you have that option available, why go the longer route? Why? And what if they say, and by the way, the weather in Toronto is really bad, so you might miss your flight, it might be delayed, maybe even cancelled, so you may be at the airport for two days. Would you take that option? Never. You won't take that option. Why? Because it's more risky. Instead of getting to your destination, you might get lost on the way. Right? You're going to lose your energy on the way. So you're like, I'm, I'd rather not go. Either it's a direct flight or it is that I'm not going. I'm not taking a connected flight. I'm not going to do that. If there is a person, you need to talk to them. You need to send a message to them. What would you feel more comfortable with? Talking to them directly yourself or sending a message to them through someone who would pass on that message to somebody else, who would pass on that message to somebody else, and then finally to the person whom you want to speak to. What would you prefer? A direct connection or a connection that is through others? Which connection? Direct one. Because you know that the people whom you're leaving the message with, they might forget. So that's another headache that you have to remind them. Make sure you convey my message. Make sure you convey my message. Did you get to talk to them? Did you get to speak to them or not? So what do you do next time? You know what? I'll just talk to them directly. I can't send these messages. I'll just talk to them directly. So when it comes to worldly matters, we understand this very clearly. You want to get to someone? Get a direct connection. Talk to them yourself. Reach them yourself because it is more secure, much more efficient. Right? When it comes to drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which connection is better? Direct one. And you know what? All servants of Allah, all people have been created equal. In the Quran, what do we learn? In Surah Al-Hujurat, that we have created all of you people from who? Min dhakarin wa unsa, from a male and female. Wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'in. We have Divide, we have made you into nations and tribes. Why? So that you can know one another. But in the akramakum indallahi atqaqum. The most noble of you is who? In the sight of Allah, the one who is most righteous of you. So each person has that potential of becoming righteous, increasing in their righteousness. And the more righteousness they have, the closer they will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From among people, whose level of righteousness is the highest? The prophets of Allah. After them, the siddiqeen, the shuhada, the salihin. But remember that all of these people, whether it's the prophets or the truthful or the martyrs, whoever they are, even they strive to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, Allah tells us about the prophets that أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ يَبْتَغُونَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمُ الْوَسِيلَةِ أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ That those, meaning the prophets, the righteous, they themselves seek means of access to their Lord. They themselves want to get closer to Allah, striving as to which of them would be nearest. And they hope for His mercy and fear His punishment. They themselves are trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should be following their ways and try to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ourselves. So there are two ways, there are two kinds of wasila. One is broken, the wrong way. The way which if a person adopts, 
instead of drawing closer to Allah, what will happen? He will be far removed from Allah. It's a way of shirk. And the other is the correct way. Now the question is, what is the correct way of drawing closer to Allah? Like I mentioned to you earlier, by performing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated.